next to somebody that could speak French. So I've learned a whole bunch of coach talk now uh, through the glass. Uh, and there's Claudia. Very helpful. The, uh, to, to, uh, Claudia is a professor of history at uh, the University of Sherbrooke. And, uh, and she's going to give us a presentation on Herb and Ossie uh, Carnegie and Manny McIntyre and their time in Sherbrooke, Quebec in the, 19, in the late 1940s. So it should be an interesting uh, look at a hockey from Sher uh, Sherbrooke. Well, thank you very much, Bill. Uh, before I begin, uh, I am wearing a replica of the Sherbrooke Saints jersey. Uh, so as you can see, the shoulders are red with uh, blue stripe and stripes uh, also uh, at the bottom sleeves. And uh, it took me uh, six weeks to find out what the colors were because it was, you know, black and white uh, pictures. So uh, finally, I got my answer at the Sports Palace uh, in Sherbrooke. Uh, there's a huge mural of uh, hockey players born in Sherbrooke, and also hockey players uh, who uh, who made uh, you know their marks in Sherbrooke, play in Sherbrooke, but uh, who were born uh, elsewhere. So uh, so okay. Um, so my name is Claudia Delicali and I am a professional translator slash instru uh, language instructor slash professional historian slash a mad hockey buff slash a very proud Sherbroker. So uh, lots of slashes here. Are there any referees in the room? No? Okay. <laughs> Um, before I begin my presentation, I would like to dedicate uh, this presentation uh, to two very important men in my life. So let's start with uh, Uncle Girard. Um, my, I, share, uh, I shared, because he's dead, I shared a common passion for history and uh, archival, uh, archival activities uh, with him. And uh, I'm sure he would be happy to see me here today. And second, my grandfather, Pierre Laplante. My grandfather was a miner and a uh, lumberjack. And uh, he was a hard worker. And uh, he is the reason why I am a mad hockey buff. And uh, there is a very interesting fact about my grandfather, and I think it's worth sharing it with you. Uh, for six years in the 70s, uh, my grandpa was a wood uh, supplier for Sherwood Trollet, you know, the hockey stick manufacturing company. And uh, the wood provided was ash, mainly for the blade and the butt end of the stick. So uh, just um, to think about the fact that my grandfather was a wood supplier for, you know, many uh, NHL players. Uh, uh, it, it makes me very proud, and uh, he worked very hard for that. Um, okay. So this is uh, a view of Sherbrooke in the 1940s. So this is downtown Sherbrooke, King Street, going east, and the street uh, that crosses here is Wellington Street. And the, the three buildings, this one, this one, and that one over there, they're still there today. So um, we're going to talk about uh, the arrival of uh, the Black Aces in Sherbrooke. So why did I choose to discuss about the Black Aces? There are two reasons. Number one, Herbie Carnegie, his brother Ossie, and uh, Manny McIntyre were pioneers in their own way. Uh, they were the first African-Canadian uh, forward line, and they were considered, at the time, uh, one of the best in uh, Canada. Uh, well, Canada and maybe North America. Um, they instilled a new way of playing, as you will see uh, during this presentation. 
Uh, and this is uh, the, the, oh yes, and number two. Uh, uh, Irby Carnegie played here in Quebec City for the Quebec Aces. And uh, since this meeting is held here in Quebec City, I thought it was a beautiful wink to the past to talk about the Black Aces. So that was reason number two. Now, uh, uh, okay, uh, their arrival, uh, well, the Carnegies and uh, Manny McIntyre were always successful um, um, where they played. And um, they were known by different nicknames and not always the flattering ones like the Dark Destroyers, the Dusky Speedsters, the Ink Spots, the Negro Line, uh, and what else? Uh, the Brown Bombers. Um, and uh, they arrived in Sherbrooke in the fall of 1945. And uh, Manny McIntyre negotiated the contract for, for all of them. And um, uh, it was for the Randers. Uh, they were named, named after the Rand, Ingersoll Rand Company. Um, and they were paid uh, $75 a week, which was, I think, a decent salary at the time. And uh, during the 1947-48 season, for example, uh, Herbie Carnegie was earning uh, $5,100 a year, uh, which is today $56,000 in today's money. Uh, and here's a quote from Irby about Manny McIntyre. Manny excelled as an agent. He was as close to a real agent as there was then. And in those days, each player acted as his own agent. And in this regard, Manny was something else. He saw the potential marketing uh, opportunities for an all, all for an all colored line. So Manny has, you know, the flair for the for spectacular things or uh, for uh, the, the 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 marketing aspect of the team. And um, there's a funny thing. Maybe funny is not the right word, but uh, when the players were um, hired by the Saints, the first contract was not negotiated with the GM. It was negotiated with the coach, Yvon Dugré, because Mr. Dugré was in charge of the scouting and recruiting new players. So the entry contract with the Saints was negotiated with Mr. Dugré. And after that, the second and the third, it was negotiated with the GM. Uh, and uh, I, I will uh, introduce all, all of these people uh, later. And uh, so, they were playing at the Sherbrooke Arena. And um, here's another quote from uh, Herbie Carnegie. Uh, the arena was a barn. In fact, it was part of the Sherbrooke Exhibition Fairgrounds where industrial exhibitions and cattle shows were staged in. Uh, and it was by far the worst facility in the league. And uh, when I was young, I saw the, the inside of this arena, and no, it was not a hockey arena at all. It was mainly uh, designed for uh, agricultural shows. And, um, and the seating capacity was 2,800 people, uh, but uh, could easily reach um, 5,000, especially when Victoriaville and Saint-Hyacinthe, playing in the Quebec Provincial Hockey League, were in town. Um, and also when professional teams were playing against the Saints, uh, such as the Montreal Canadiens and the Detroit Red Wings. So here, here's the picture. Uh, it was taken on January 20th, 1954. And this is uh, Gilles Dubé from the Saints, uh, born in Sherbrooke. A very skilled player uh, with a very good hockey IQ. 
And this is uh, Mr. You Know Who. Uh, you, you know who he is, right? <laughs> so, um, and at the time, the Saints uh, were the farm team of the Detroit Red Wings. And it only lasted a year. And uh, I don't know exactly why, but I think it's uh, because of financial reasons. Uh, uh, for the Saints, it was always tough to begin a season because uh, mainly of lack of funds. Uh, it was really hard to, uh, to recruit new players and to offer them a decent salary. And uh, also uh, there was um, an issue with taxes with, uh, with the Canadian Hockey League, I think, uh, because uh, they, they had to give a percentage to um, the league and to the Canadian Association. And uh, it was really tough for them to just to uh, organize a year because they, they couldn't afford to uh, think in advance. Um, and um, so uh, the Black Aces uh, were a major attraction uh, in the Quebec Provincial League. And Jean Beliveau said when uh, he was uh, 13 or 14 years old and still living in Victoriaville that the Saints and the Black Aces in particular uh, were drawing huge crowds at the local arena and it was sold out everywhere they went even in uh, Cornwall because uh, there was a team in Cornwall uh, the Cougars if my memory uh, serves me right uh, it was uh, packed everywhere there are two reasons for that uh, the first one it's I hate to say that but it's it was because they were colored players and uh, because it was uh, at the time it was very unusual for people uh, to see three black players playing on the same line and uh, and it was surprising to see three uh, black players you know playing at all because because they were all white so um, but my, um, my opinion is mainly, I would say, their uh, style of play. And um, they were really good for three reasons. Number one, their great chemistry. They played so beautifully together. Uh, they, they knew exactly where they were on the ice. Um, they, it, was, it was like a, a second nature for them because they practiced a lot together and they played for many years together. They played in the ABTB uh, in Peron. It's a small mining town. They played there and they played in Timmins, another mining town, I believe. And uh, they played in Shawinigan uh, the year just before playing in Sherbrooke. Uh, so they were, you know, they were uh, like, a, you know, an old pair of slippers. It's, you know, it's very comfortable, it's comfy. So I guess it was the same thing when they were playing together. It just clicked. Um, the second reason is their quick transitions in their own zone. Basically, they were quick to get the puck out of their zone. So uh, in today's hockey, we're talking a lot about transition. And uh, I think they were ahead of their time in that aspect of the play. And number three, they were very responsible players. They were great two-way players. And I think at the time, the two-way player was not a concept um, that was, you know, instilled in the, in the play. So uh, in that aspect, they were in advance for that too. Now, let's take a look at their individual assets. Let's start with Herbie. Herbie was a center, and uh, as you can see, he was a marvelous skater, a smooth one, and uh, his game uh, rev uh, revolved around speed and puck control. Uh, he was nicknamed Swivel Hips because he likes to dig a lot, and I also saw the nickname Dipsy Doodle uh, in the newspapers. 
Um, and, uh, and here I would like to draw your attention uh, to that aspect. He was very creative and always wanted to improve. He, he always <coughs> wanted to uh, find you know, new ways to be better. And uh, he was a hard worker too. He stayed after practice a lot, uh, always practicing something. Uh, with, of course, Manny and Aussie. Uh, and uh, he wasn't afraid of hard work. And this is, uh, I think, uh, the main characteristic about Herbie. Uh, because he, uh, he was an excellent hockey player, there is no doubt about it. But it was not like uh, he didn't do it overnight. Because it was the result of hard work. And he was a very committed hockey player too. And uh, he was nickna uh, nicknamed, yeah, named uh, Quebec Provincial Hockey League MVP for three consecutive years. Uh, in my opinion, 1947 is his best season ever. Um, he had 127 points in 56 games. So uh, I don't know the average per game, but it's... Uh, really good average and um, and in 1947 the Saints won the uh, provincial uh, hockey league uh, hockey league championship it was a I think the, one of the greatest years uh, for the history of the club and he was a gifted all-around athlete he became a professional golfer after his uh, uh, hockey career and he won two Canadian um, senior championships in 1977 and 1978. Now let's take a look at Ozzy. Uh, he was known for his blazing and uh, wicked shot. Uh, Ozzy was practicing this shot a lot. So he spent hours and hours just to practice the shot. Uh, very tough to play against. Uh, he was really strong. Uh, Mr. Uh, Hanley, my fellow uh, member at the Sherbrooke Historical Society said that uh, uh, the work colleagues at the Ingersoll Rand Company, they were just in awe because he was lifting big steel beams without any apparent effort. So he was really strong on the ice and off the ice also. Um, he was, uh, uh, according to Mr. Uh, Hanley, he was the best back checker of the team. Um, and off the ice, uh, because we uh, talk about a lot uh, about Herbie and Manny, but Ozzy was, you know, the, the low profile one. Uh, and I think he liked it that way. Uh, he was uh, soft spoken, quiet, but he was a team guy. Uh, he participated in uh, all uh, team activities. So, um, but he, he didn't talk much. And next it's uh, Manny. Manny was a, a kind of enforcer, but an enforcer with talent. Um, he was um, always smiling on the ice, even, uh, if he, uh, uh, even if the opponent wanted to hit his head off. He was always smiling on and off the ice, because he was a true gentleman off the ice, always smiling, and the fans really liked him. Um, and it was not a good idea to mess with him. And uh, I will tell you the, the story of a rivalry between him and Arthur Lessard. Arthur Lessard was playing for the Saint-Hyacinthe Gaulois. He was the coach player for the team, <coughs> and uh, they just hated each other. They despised each other. Um, uh, it reminds me actually of the rivalry between Kenny Reardon and Cal Gardner. I don't know if you ever heard of this rivalry. It was like, just like that rivalry. And, um, and he wasn't afraid to drop the gloves and always stood up for uh, his teammates. Uh, but Herbie Carnegie never considered him as a goon or an enforcer, never. Um, he was uh, also uh, battling hard for the pucks and corners, and the Carnegie brothers uh, acknowledged that fact. They said that 
if they were so successful, it's because of Manny's hard work uh, just to retrieve puck in the corners. And he was also a gifted athlete. He was playing semi-pro baseball uh, with the uh, Sherbrooke Canadians. Yeah, and at the time, uh, the Sherbrooke Canadians uh, uh, were uh, the St. Louis Cardinals <coughs> farm team, and he played shortstop for them. Uh, this is a picture of the Randers, uh, the first year that the Carnegies <coughs> were in Sherbrooke. You can recognize them in the middle. And uh, this is Pee Wee Leblanc. Pee Wee Leblanc was like uh, five foot tall and 135 pounds soaking wet. And uh, he was not a good skater. Mr. Hanley told me that uh, he was not a player, he was uh, rather the mascot of the team. And, uh, but he was very popular among the fans. Um, so this is uh, their first year in Sherbrooke. Uh, and now this is um, the Sherbrooke Saints, uh, 1948-49 uh, edition. And wow, I'm just looking at the picture and they are so talented. It's, it's like, um, it was a dream team for a coach. Uh, let's start, uh, well, Herbie is here, uh, Manny is in the middle and Aussie is at the other extremity. Uh, let's start with this guy, Bill Engel, uh, Bill Engel Sr., because his son played in the NHL. And he was a defenseman and uh, very tough to play against. He was a fabulous skater. Um, and um, number two, it's Cliff Goupil. I think you, you've heard of Cliff Goupil. He was playing for the Montreal Canadiens. And a uh, very good defenseman, too. Um, he was uh, used in power play and he had, he had a blazing shot, he was really good. Uh, Paul Leclerc, uh, a goalie, uh, according to Mr. Hanley, it was the best goalie in the Provincial League. And there's uh, number 18, it's Roger Dion. Roger Dion is a police officer. And um, he was born in Sherbrooke. And, uh, Really nice guy, and uh, both goalies were playing big in front of their net. So they were uh, pretty uh, difficult to play against. And uh, this is Gilles Dubé, uh, you saw him uh, a little bit earlier. Uh, born in Sherbrooke, he played for the Montreal Canadiens and the Red Wings. Uh, this is Ivan Herwin, uh, he played for the Rangers and the Montreal Canadiens. And this guy is known for an infamous picture. He was uh, messing around with the rocket. I don't know if you've seen that picture. Uh, just Google on, um, well, just Google on um, Google, yeah. <laughs> uh, um, Maurice Pichard and Ivan Irwin, and you'll see the picture. And you'll see the rockets, look. It was pretty dirty. <laughs> And pretty gutsy from Erwin to uh, challenge the rocket. And uh, number five, it's Tony Deneps. He played for the Montreal Canadiens. He played with the rocket on the same line. Very talented, but unfortunately off the ice, he was something else. He was really wild. He was uh, dealing with uh, drinking issues. And, uh, and uh, he ended up in jail. Well, it was not... Uh, it was not uh, rosy uh, off the ice, and um, and uh, this is Marcel Fillon. He played for the Bruins. Uh, Kelly Burnett for the New York Rangers. Uh, this is Ray Barry, and not Marty Barry. I thought it was Marty, but it's Ray Barry, and he also played for the Boston Bruins. And number four, it's uh, Adjutant Côté. He was born here in Quebec City, but he was not good enough for the Aces, so he, uh, he came to Sherbrooke and he had a very successful career. Uh, Mr. Hanley told me that Adjutor Côté was the most intelligent hockey player in the Provincial League and uh, one of the most intellig intelligent he, he has ever seen. Uh, the coach is, is Yvan Dugré, uh, very uh, very good coach. He was the ultimate coach. He was a player's coach. And um, 
he was very involved in the Shibrit community. And the, this is Forrest King, the, the GM, and in the middle it's uh, Dr. Dupuis, uh, the president of the team. And this is a picture of their championship in 1947 with the Horace Boivin Cup. Uh, and you can see Aussie is smiling, which was very rare to see. Um, okay. um, just before I enter this part, their legacy, I just wanted to, um, to tell you interesting facts. Um, uh, the Carnegies and Maggie McIntyre really enjoyed their time in Sherbrooke. They really liked the city. Uh, often on the ice, uh, they always felt welcomed by the community. And in Sherbrooke, it was very particular at the time because uh, French people and English people got along. So it was uh, a, a rare thing to see, uh, but in Sherbrooke, the, dy the dynamic is different from uh, anywhere else in Quebec. So uh, they, uh, Herbie Carnegie said that uh, he also enjoyed the scenery, the greenery, and the hills, because there are lots of hills in Sherbrooke. Uh, I don't know if you've ever been in Sherbrooke, but uh, if you want to uh, ride a bike there, good luck. <laughs> Especially if you're not in shape. Um, uh, so, and it, they, they also liked the tranquility of the city. Um, okay. Oops. Sorry. Um, there's an, in, um, an interesting thing with Coach Dugré. Uh, at the end of practice, uh, they were doing like sprints, you know, uh, 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 back and forth on the ice, and the coach gave two dollars for the winner of those sprints. And apparently, Herbie Carnegie was an avid sprinter because he was piling up all these two dollars, and uh, and Mr. Um, Hanley told me that uh, Herbie was the fastest skater of the team and probably the fastest of the provincial league. So I think uh, Herbie really enjoyed those uh, end of practice sprints. And um, Maddie McIntyre was a terrific storyteller. Um, you know, he was, uh, uh, he made people laugh and he was very popular among teammates. A true gentleman uh, of the ice, as I told you earlier. Um, and uh, Yvan Dugré, again, uh, owned a uh, hockey stick manufacturing uh, uh, company. It was called the Sherbrooke Wood Products. And uh, you know in the 40s and the 50s, uh, Canadian players uh, were playing with uh, CCM sticks and uh, the American players were playing with Northland sticks. But in Sherbrooke, they were playing with Hespeller sticks. So they were the only team to play with that brand at the time in the Quebec Provincial Hockey League. And, um, and Herbie Carnegie made sure that uh, his blade was toothpick thin because uh, to him it was e easier to, to deke with the puck. And... Um, well, uh, their legacy is, uh, unfortunately, they didn't make the, uh, oh, I hear something like a cell phone. Oh, no, okay. Uh, they didn't make the NHL, unfortunately, and mainly it's because of the color bar, as you already know. Uh, they had overcome many obstacles. Uh, they heard racist slurs from the opposing uh, fans. Um, Herbie's father, I have a great quote here, uh, told him that he would have to work hard just to survive, that he would have to be twice as good as whites to succeed. And you remember the infamous remark made by Con Smythe, I will <coughs> give $10,000 to anyone who can turn Herbie Carnegie white. And this remark was devastating for Herbie. 
He said that his dreams of playing in the NHL diminished a lot. And uh, it was uh, heartbreaking for him just to hear that from Con Smythe. Uh, and Con Smythe was not anybody uh, back in the day. So, um, and, uh, the, uh, the, and, and ultimately, uh, they paved the way for the likes of Willie Ori. Uh, Ori said the Carnegies and McIntyre had a powerful impact on him and other African-American <coughs> players at the time. And uh, I will conclude with this. Would have they been good enough for the NHL? I have two different point of views. Uh, first of all, according to Mr. Hanley, Herbie uh, was very talented and he could have uh, played on a second line in the NHL, but not it was not, it was not the case for Manny and uh, Aussie. On the other hand, Dick Wilson, a sports writer from Sherbrooke, said that Irby could have been a star in the 16 era. As a line, Wilson said that Irby, Aussie, and Manny uh, could have made a respectable contribution to any NHL team at the time. So it's, I think it's um, mixed, I would say. Um, and to conclude, Maple Leaf owner Harold Ballard once remarked to Carnegie, he said, Herbie, you were born 25 years too soon. But Carnegie disagreed and he said, no, the powers that be were not ready for me. So, merci beaucoup, thank you very much.